Constitution, it's written, and we have our declaration, we have statutes, but what we don't have written down is the, some of the best stuff, and it's the culture of the way we operate. And uh, as you said, as I wrote, uh, he was shot, he was almost mortally wounded. By any other situation, in any other situation, he would have been dead. It's just Jerry Parr, who I rave about in the book, the Secret Service agent, yeah, who yeah, grew up, inspired to become a Secret Agent because he saw Reagan play a Secret Service agent in the movies. And he, the bullet was here, half his blood supply lost internally, in terrible shape. And even the, when Tip got in there to visit him, and they brought him in, um, really weak. And Tip, I had this eyewitness, Max Friedersdorf, who was head of Congressional Relations, that Jim Brecken had posted there to keep the big shots out of it. And um, Tip went in, and he walked over, knelt next to Reagan's uh, bed, held both hands, prayed with him. They prayed the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, which all, we all know. And, uh, and then he kissed him on the forehead. And Ray said, thanks for coming to me. It was really kind of an emotional, kind of sacramental moment. And uh, there's other moments like that I found in the book that just grabbed me, like when Tip went over to meet Gorbachev for the first time and, uh, and vouched for Ray. He said, he speaks for our whole country. And he's, whatever fights we've had in the past, this guy's serious about nuclear arms reduction. So take him seriously. And he did all that. And it was commented on by the Today Show that morning by, at the time, Brian Gumbel, without affect, without novelty. At this hour, I found this after I wrote the book. At this hour, a bipartisan delegation is in Moscow meeting with the new Soviet chairman. The, delega uh, the delegation is carrying with them a letter from President Reagan asking for a meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev. The delegation is being led by Speaker of the House Thomas P. O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Without any novelty, it was considered normal then. How different today? Can you imagine Obama sending uh, Boehner to deal with Putin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it would be remarkable, but then it was unremarkable that the two would work together. There's such a thing in our culture that's just gone downhill. Of course you have to argue over ideology. We, we know our history. This country has been fighting about the role of the federal government in our lives since Hamilton and Jefferson fought about it. It's the old American argument. How big should the power of Washington be? It's always our argument. And it's about who we are. Do we want a lot of centralized power or not? And luckily, we have two vigorous political parties to argue that. But they've lost some of the tactic and the culture of how to argue. And in the same with foreign affairs, we don't have to get into it, but foreign affairs, the old argument, how much a role should the United States play in the world? And that goes back to the Francophiles, uh, the, the Jeffersonians who want us to take the side in the French Revolution to get involved in that, and the, and the Hamiltonians who want us to be pro-British. But the role we should play in the world and how much we should stay isolationist and how much we should get engaged, these are the great two emerging.